And right, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Isaac, and I'm very excited to bring you the next circle um, here live from Stratford upon Avon, glorious uh, town. We had a bit of a walk through today, uh, lovely sunny. So very excited to bring you the Agri Leader Circle. And tonight we're going to talk a bit about some leadership and management and how you don't need a title to be a leader. Um, these guys have just joined us for the last couple of days at the AgriLeader Forum, a brilliant couple of days, and so we'll soon see a bit about some of their reflections about that, but we'll, we'll widen the conversation a bit and look at leadership and management in the broader sense. Um, at at AgriLeader, we did a, a bit of research a couple of years ago, and actually less than half a percent of farmers actually engage with anything around leadership and management, less than half a percent. I mean. That that was for me. That was quite a bit of a shocking um, thing. So, so you know, what what is the barriers? How do we improve that? What's your thoughts on on leadership? So, we'll talk a bit about that, and what you thought of the conference for the last couple of days. So, um, <clears throat> well, me and Charlotte, it was our first ever conference ever, ever. Yeah, and and they're going to be disappointly you know, no, disappointed. No, no, good. No, no I mean, I mean, anything yeah. after this is going to be such a letdown. <laughs> Healthy, not going to be quite as good as this so uh, yeah <laughs> high expectations yeah, yeah very yeah. <laughs> i think uh, it's a bit of a different conference though isn't it it's not straight farming the whole point of it is that it's getting speakers who maybe have some involvement in farming but not a lot but not a lot so it's trying to bring outside ideas into our industry which we kind of need to learn from other people sometimes i totally well, agree I like, as well as like sometimes like at, when i thought of a conference i thought oh it's going to be somebody just out of out of front like a whiteboard or just putting screens and stuff in front of you but it was like very active and like we built the pasta thing didn't we at the start so we were building like <laughs> extra towers like the ice breakers and stuff some you know, people were cheating yeah ollie cheated no he didn't, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Before we go any further, let's just remind people who you are and, and you know, where you're from. Remember, and put some questions in there. We really want to hear from you. Where are you from? Tell us where you're from. Tell us whether you're farming or not. And yeah, so put your questions in there. See what these guys think about that. So where should we start? Ollie, let's start with you. Uh, so Ollie Harrison, a cereal farmer from near Liverpool. Um, I am the NFU Northwest Crops Board chair as well at the moment. Uh, I'm Rebecca Wilson, mixed farmer, sheep and arable. We're in North Yorkshire. I'm Charlotte Ashley and I am beef and sheep in Cumbria. I'm Georgina Samet. I am farming down in Lincolnshire on a mixture of flowers and cereals. Uh, so I'm Joe Seals, uh, beef finishing, uh, mainly Aberdeen Angus and a, a small arable side as well. So that's in uh, South Yorkshire. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I just say as well that we we some of us have got hold of phones because we can read the comments on it. So that's I've got mine here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah you you're not just bored. Yeah, so we're not not just <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, let's let's carry on that conversation. As your first conference, what did you think of it? It was quite inspiring to be. Um, not that you don't have to be the boss and in control of something. It was more like a mindset of how to go forward and not even not even having anyone underneath you to, you know, mm -hmm. boss about as such. It was more just working on yourself and the way that you present yourself and the way that you believe in yourself, which was quite different, um, and see yourself as a leader, which is quite peculiar, even though I'm not leading anybody other than a stray <laughs> like <laughs> but it's interesting to you know what I mean to, to actually think of yourself as somebody who could be a leader of anything um but I think that social media we definitely are so we have to consider that and act quite yeah. responsibly yeah like the, the uh, like the I don't know there was all sorts of like psychology um played a big part in it didn't it like the growth mindset and then um I think one, one interesting thing somebody said was your brain doesn't accept don't and not. I don't know if you remember that from that, that guy yes. saying. It. It's like if you're like taking a penalty or something, and you're like, oh, don't, don't, don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. There's more chance that you'll like mess up. I thought, oh, that's like I've never really heard that sort of stuff. Yeah. So what what he said was he said I can't remember who the footballer was. He said he coached him, and he said when he's walking up to the goal, he's got one question in his mind, 
and he doesn't answer it till he's two paces from the ball. And that question in his mind is, which way am I going to run once I've scored, left or right? <laughs> because he's in his head, he's already told himself he's won. And it's not like, when I hit it, when I won't, like, which way will I only go? It's no, which way am I going to run when I hit it? But it's all about thinking in the right way. And, and that belief in yourself of, you know, I can do this and how you see yourself, isn't it? Which I, I think is quite important in farming because we feel like there's so many things out of our control. And maybe we use that as an excuse as well. Oh, well, it's not going to go very well because we can't change the weather. But actually, maybe we need to get in the right mindset a bit more of let's do the best possible job we can of everything that we can control and get ourselves in that mindset of we're going to achieve that regardless of these outside factors, which obviously throw quite a lot of spanners in the works. Um, but it's about getting on with it as well. He also but, said be real though, didn't he? No toxic positivity as in, yeah. yeah, it's quite a dangerous thing. So do be quite real with You can yourself. go to the extreme, yeah, yeah too much. Yeah. But it, it's that whole thing, you know, life is going to happen, murder is going to happen, but it's how we react to it. That's what the, determines the outcome, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I, th I think that the, I hate this term influence of like the whole thing, but, but being a leader and a manager and taking your staff with you on that journey so that they all feel a part of it means that, that people are happier and they're more engaged. And if they're more in engaged and they're happier, there's less likely to be accidents, they're more productive as well. And everyone just basically has a better day enjoying the job. And we're going to come back to start in a minute, but um. Gina and, and Rebecca, so this conversation came up earlier, you know, in a family business or business and working for somebody, yeah. you, you can still be a leader, you can still, you still determine your own future and your own success, so, you know, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I definitely agree because the farming business at home is myself, uh, my mum and my dad, so the idea of having leadership and a leadership structure and a kind of promotion progression idea, it's not there, but actually you can still take some of the concepts that we've learned about particularly about mindset, I think. And then for, for Gina, obviously, again, you're working for somebody else. And sometimes it would feel, oh, well, I'm not a leader because I'm an employee. But actually, we're in the wrong mindset thinking that way, aren't we? 100%. And I'll just let you say, because I'm, I, I am generally only just a farm worker. But if you think of it as, this is a team, this is not a solo you're blow me. You thought we saw that chart. Did you see the photo that you took? It was like it was the stick figures. It was three workers and the boss in the carrot. Yes, the I chariot. Didn't say that. And then it was like the leader is joining in with the team. And then mm. as long as you work as a team, you're not like scrutinized for being they don't play the card of oh, you're below me. It it would work. It would work. You need to work as a team. Like you say, think of the right mindset. And I think yeah. even even if you're a one person band. It's still you know, that whole thing about leading yourself, leading your business. It's it's your growth mindset, and, you know, all the different mindsets that we'll explore. But it it doesn't matter, you know, and it's not about and it's not just about people. You know, it's all about people, but it's not about how many people you manage. It's how you drive your business. There's a good question here, and it's talking about small businesses. How do you cope with leadership when the older generations are still involved and still feel like they're in control? Now, that is the single biggest thing on yeah, the it farms. Is. Yeah, it came up and came up say, a lot, didn't it? Uh, Euthanasia <laughs> came up about. <above. laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's basically letting them believe that they still have their charge of that. So one guy yesterday was saying that he, that he struggled with, with his dad and um, trying to get new ideas from the, around his dad. But his dad had an iPad and had a Twitter account because it was already preloaded and he didn't know... He didn't follow anyone on Twitter. So they followed people on Twitter that they wanted his dad to follow and learn from. <laughs> so then as the months went on and his dad saw things on Twitter, they realised then, oh, hold on a second, this is a good idea. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of like impregnated into his dad's iPad. <laughs> but, but, but a lot of it is communication as well. So one of the big things that we did on, on our farm was, was have a WhatsApp group with every all the employees, in, including my dad. So even if he didn't quite know what was going on, he, he, he could keep up pace, especially at Harvest when everyone's busy. You, you can't ring 20 people and say, we're moving this, we're not failing that field now. We're going to that one. But if you put it in a WhatsApp group, even if only one person needed to know, but if everyone knows, it just makes things better for everyone. So if I was included then as well. Yeah, exactly. It's not like, I'm isolated. I'm, I'm the I boss. Only I'm going to tell you even what to do. Everyone knows what they're doing, when they're doing, how they're doing it. Like I say, going back to working as a team, positive impact makes you work harder, you don't feel so isolated or belittled. And I think that links to that idea of, um, well, we've been talking about acknowledgement, so yeah. acknowledging somebody's 
question or idea, even if it's probably not viable, it gives people a sense of value within. So even if it's keeping everybody in the loop, that still makes you feel valued in your team, which is, I'd say, pretty important. And That's maybe we're not very thing, good at doing it? that. I'll tell you from, from a cross-generational business world, what's your thoughts? Um, like the thing that I thought I was going to take from it is you were talking about there were a, a company called Cook, which like sold a hundred million pounds of food or whatever last year, like massive company started small, grew big. And um, they had like a strategy and like mission statement, which, you know, it seems all a bit like cheesy and stuff, but maybe that's a way to like get the older generation involved, like sit around a table and say like, right, what are we actually wanting to achieve like with this business? And like have a conversation about it, write some stuff down, and then be like, "Well, that's what we're going to try and work mm -hmm. up." As like and, and somebody said also about you know choose the lifestyle you want to live, choose what is really important. Yeah, you, know, you can you can come up with mission statements and vision and all of that, but actually, you know, be true to yourself. Find find what is important in life, and then you build your strategy or your mission around that. Mm, and yeah. make choices as if you were where you want to be as well. Yeah, that was like he was saying about um it was a golfer, wasn't it? And he said if you were number five in the world tomorrow, you know, what would you change about what you were doing right now? And he said, Well, if I was, you know, number 50, I'd be having a beer in the bar. And he said, But if I was number five, I'd be having water because obviously I'd be taking myself more seriously. And that's the point. Take yourself as seriously as mm. if you were winning. And, and see yourself where yeah, see you know, yourself where you it, want to be. Where you know, if I already own that other farm. Like or if, if I already... can be sat here doing this, trust me, like you can do... <laughs> make it so you make it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can do anything. <laughs> there's, there's one here actually though about again about old generations, because I, I I don't want to like hijack the whole thing, but obviously a lot of farms have worked with multiple generations. Um how do you older generations don't want to change how how do we get around that well one of the things that we were talking about over the last two days is the only thing that's constant is change and it's mm -hmm. being ready for it and the if leadership means that you've got to skill yourself to be able to deal with the older generations to to make them believe in the change then that that's what you've got to do Mm -hmm. Well, like that guy was saying, that things are just moving so fast in technology. Like, if you don't get on board with these changes that are happening, like in the outside of work environment, then you're just going to get took out. Like you were saying about, was it Uber? Like, all mm -hmm. the taxi drivers were like, we're not scared about Uber. And then Uber's just took over, like, completely. Yeah, just destroyed their technologies, you can call it, don't they? Where someone outside of your industry invent something better than you know yeah, I, you know who knows amazon might be selling milk next year you know the stranger things happen you, you uber is the biggest taxi company in the world and doesn't own a car yeah you know yeah. blockbuster didn't fear netflix uh, um was the the film company but um you know tg they said thoughts and they've got the whole market sewn up so nobody's ever gonna listen you know use the cameras on their phone yeah. yeah, Nokia. Yeah. Nokia. What happened to you, Nokia 3210? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Telecommunications. Oh, snake where they gone? Yeah. Snake. <laughs> so let's let's come back to that whole thing about some, you know, some. How do we? How do you convince mom and dad? And right, this is where where we need to go. I think it goes to the point of you know when um this morning we were it was the I'm trying to make a an abridged version of what we were told. Basically, it was a doctor who wanted to try a new technique. Um, 40 odd other doctors said, no, you absolutely can't do that. He wanted to do it, ended up doing it, and it was a illegally. success. <clears throat> he did it illegally. Um, <laughs> and by kind of questionable means, but anyway. Um, but the point was that he took the plunge, but he also did his research. So he didn't just take the plunge and you know there's always unexpected consequences aren't there but he could plan for it and he knew as much as possible what was going to happen and so if I was going to present something to my parents I would do my research I'd make sure that what I was presenting was definitely a feasible option and if that it wasn't a feasible option but I could maybe see where the problems would come out but they were workable so I'd try and I'd try and make my case and I wouldn't just go too gung-ho and the other thing I can't remember where it came from but the, the whole thing of influence the influencers kind of thing with for parents who's the people that they're going to listen to you know if you go uh, there's there's that thing of you know some 
the the parent sub um you know parent child relationship but if you can manage to get somebody on board that they actually oh bring in an external yeah, person yeah. he was quite a fan of that wasn't he because everyone kind of behaves a bit better <laughs> when somebody externals in the the heated room maybe um yeah that would be a good idea it could even be like having your agronomist on side talk your idea through with your agronomist and then you have some backing, you have some of the knowledge, and actually you have a, some support there if you need to pitch this idea. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to. Ask I think for if that. someone was going to make want to make serious change in a serious, you know, properly, writing down a pack is not a bad idea like that, and leave it with somebody because I think going and presenting an idea vocally you often can get into a bit of a sparring yeah. if if both sides are quite, you know, hell-bent on what they want yeah. to do. I, I wrote down this bit, um, find common ground to change someone's mind. Yeah. 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 Like, this is my idea, that's your idea. They're not the same. But fact, try and strip it back to find out which bit you do agree on. And then and, In a minute, Gina, I'm going to ask you about some videos and what your experience that, but we've had Andrew Wilson on uh, Rebecca's YouTube saying, make the suggestion, you know, sow the seed, Yes. Leave it, leave it for a while, let it grow, let it, you know, kind of germinate. Um, and then in time, the older generation will kind of, you know, some, get interested and declare, we should have thought of this about, you know, years ago. And that's when it harvests, it's what agricultural. It will be their best idea yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you don't remind it, that was your idea. Your thoughts on this? You know, so oh. how, would you, how, how do you manage, you know, so your boss or, or some other people working on the farm? Well, at the end of the day, it's one of those things where, like, if you if, obviously if you've got your boss telling us what to do, then you go and do those things. But you have like, then if, for example, I'll always do everything anyone will ask me. But if I have an opinion, I've got a question, I'll never be like, "Well, I couldn't ask that." You always put that forward, and whether they like the idea or not, you talk about it. Maybe if they think it's a better idea, you've got a better way of doing it. Don't be afraid to bring it up. At the end of the day, you'll never progress if you don't question, you don't ask. What did you I say? Two thousand ideas. Yeah, Two thousand ideas for, and one, good for one. one good idea. <laughs> so you don't want to stop people like giving ideas yeah. because otherwise you're never going to get to that two thousand. You're never going to find that good one. And so yeah, put put that in. There was the guy from Cook, I think. They had is it two two thousand mm -hmm. employees as well, and you know on the kitchen and in the shops and whatever, and and they've got a this policy that in a certain week. Everybody can put their ideas in it and they can ask, you know, when they kind of revisit their strategy, ask every employee about some ideas and, and how they think the strategy should go. You know, they obviously have something, a, a structure for it. And, and you know, some of the, the buying you get from a company, you know, or in a company when it is like that. And he was telling us as well about the, you know, when COVID hit and things were really bad, some people were saying, you know, they, they kind of explained that it's, it's going to be a difficult time. And people say, well, you know, I used to have a commute and now I'm not having a commute, so I'll give up that. You can take that money back off me. And, you know, various people and do that because they've had that buying into this company. He also wrote appreciation notes to people. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, you know, your farming dad's going to start writing your appreciation notes, but mm -hmm. as a, uh, you know, you can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, you know, the sentiment is there to, to appreciate people. And it's easy to just, Massive. especially when you're on a farm and you're working with family, you are just expected to do. And quite often it just gets overlooked. And people do appreciate you. That's the thing I've mm. noticed. Thank you. People you do all. appreciate you, but they just don't See. vocalize it. They'll tell everyone else, they just won't tell you, which is something that you have to remember. But it's nice to be told, isn't it? And, it? and I think it's important to almost put yourself, if you are a leader and seen as the leader, put yourself in the position of the people who you are leading. And imagine if you were them constantly coming up with ideas, thinking you're helping, trying to improve, and you get knocked down every single time, that's demoralizing and it's only going to lead to a less productive workforce, mm. isn't it? If you're knocked down every single time. I've, I've uh, had one of these things and I had Nick Wheeler, who's the, the owner of Charles Titworth Shirts, and I've got a big, big, so shared and and he said every week he'll go into the feedback section uh, and you know it's mostly negative stuff but when he finds something good on there he'll so go into that store or you know and so write something to that store to that person doesn't matter who they are and say thank you very much you know we've had this feedback and this is a company i think 200 million something like that and he says the whole sales for that shop 
goes up for two or three weeks just because the boss had written in. Well, you know, then that's just the one person, but everybody lifts their it's game. Incentivizing, yeah. isn't it? So really, if he was a good leader, he'd just send them messages anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating. <laughs> but I've written here similar lines. People support what they help to create. Uh, that was a yeah. take home message I thought in that. And that, and that's it. It's making everyone feel like they're involved in it and that they're working with you, not for you, I suppose. Isn't it? the same goal also going back really quickly you know as you're saying um you know, you've got like your boss your farm manager say for example especially on like a family run farm not you don't see very often especially like on like how i said on like animal farms like beef dairy sheep they kind of follow in their dad's footsteps they never really have the dad overpowering them they always involve them so anyway so they also sometimes so I'm not saying every farmer is like it because some are absolutely fantastic and then actually think as if you're only work. Actually, they never had to work for someone else. They've always followed mm. kind of in. Not say like I say, it's not, I'm not saying it's every situation because some, like I say, are fantastic. But they would never like know what it would feel like to be in a worker's mm. position that's not, for example, maybe not from a background or not done that exact specific farming. So some, sometimes it would be obviously a bit easy, a bit sorry, a bit more difficult for them to praise if they haven't mm. had that themselves <clears throat> that was that belief the whole belief system you know because we we learn from you know when you go into whatever job it is they tell you how to feed the calves or you know how to to plow or whatever and that instills the belief system so it doesn't matter you know it's an, the, the i can't remember the phrase but you know when when we believe that and there's almost no way you know, and we can change our mind. It was going. That was with the monk, wasn't, wasn't it? it? Yeah. 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 When he said, it, um, "Oh, don't deal with him. He's a pain. He's yeah. Gonna be, yeah. It's going to be terrible so, to deal with them. You know, as a company, they're going to be awful. But in actual fact, they're probably not going to be awful. Yeah. Like it's just a learned behavior. So, so we really need to make that conscious decision of actually, no, I'm going to break away from that and and create a new belief system to to achieve what we need to achieve, isn't it? Like I said, it goes back to the mindset. You have a positive mindset. You're coming to work, you're going, it's going to be a good day. It's all going to work out. You do it some time, have a good idea, forward. It puts you in a different mindset, which puts that someone else in a better mood, which kind of creates a stronger bond. Between... I think it's all like, it starts with you as well. Like, so you've got to look after yourself first. The guy was saying, like, in the aeroplane, you know, when the oxygen mask dropped down, you put your, you put your own one on first before you can help anybody else. So like, I thought it was good that um, AHDB had got the... Um, uh, it was like nurses um, around the place and they were doing like blood, blood pressure tests and, um, and like were there to... Yeah, help and mental health, health check. nurses yeah. to, to check. Uh, and that's a big part of fitness and we, we base our offering around this leading yourself, leading your people, leading your business and that leading yourself and looking after yourself is, is so important. So important you know. I've got here as well, attitude more important than IQ. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I take I will over IQ every single day. Yeah. You said like the, the job market was changing in that um, it used to be like really skilled, but now like it's more you need people that are going to do it. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Rebecca, we um, had something on your Instagram saying not all managers are leaders and not all leaders are managers. I think that's a um, really good point and we have that thing about leaders versus boss as well so yeah definitely and yeah. and i guess it's within your business as well even if it is only a couple of people it's getting the right people in the right places as well and not everybody's going to be good at everything and it's like katie was saying so the after dinner speaker was um katie daily mclean and she was talking about the fact that she was quite direct quite to the point but sometimes members of her team needed a bit more of a a kind of a caring ear and arm around the shoulder but that was a role which was really good for her vice captain to take up so they recognized their strengths and just played to their strengths um and i think that actually links to what um was said about you can try and work on your weaknesses but then you're weak and weak in a strength which yeah. i thought was a really interesting point and actually should we just concentrate on what we know we're good at and keep building that and actually right. delegate some of the other areas where we're weak to somebody else in our business or somebody external to the business as well. That is working as a team though, isn't it? Properly. Uh, yeah, obviously it doesn't work all the time, but that is a team, isn't it? Everyone's got their own role that's clearly defined and it's quite, you know, boundaries are set. That's how it works well and people know what they're meant to be doing. Yeah. So please keep on coming with the comments. Tell us where you're from. 
uh, all of that. Something else that really struck me about um, Katie's uh, talk last night is when she first came into the job of, of captain, she tried to be like the previous two captains which she played under, and she wasn't true to herself and, and you know, wasn't authentic, and it didn't work. And, and we had a bit of this conversation previously on this, you know, some keeping that authentic, on ah, you authenticity. Know. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how how do you do it? Because yes, yeah, and on on the the social media stuff that you're on, that's important. You know, if you lose that, then the, you know it doesn't work, does it? People see through you. Yeah. If you're not your actual self, and people know, they pick up on it. Of course, mm. they do. Mm. Even to the point that if you're not feeling the hundred percent, and you're putting it on you'll get a message, are you all right? Um, People know when you're not being genuine. Yeah, you- Listen, I don't love myself, I might help it. Holy <laughs> <laughs> deal. Oh, no. But no, I think they, do, they just see right mm. through it. And I think people, they're not gonna get very far if you're not being yourself, because it's actually exhausting. Yeah, mm. yeah. I've got, a, I've got a couple on here. Um, I'm just gonna read them out because they all make sense. Uh, ladies need to get, delegate and show responsibility to their staff, show respect and listen. Bob P says, if you want to influence your future goals on dad's farm, make your ideas their ideas. And there are there are many types of seeds to sow. Some might just take a couple of seasons to germinate. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Play the long game. And then another one, open to everyone. What is a good way of team building in farming? Mm. I like to take everybody out to the pub. Yeah. So oh, I like, get to everybody out of the work environment, and um, you know, there's no, none of the stresses. And we have got go karting on the list. It's like on the bucket list. Of things list. To do. <laughs> it, can, it can be as simple as just going to the pub. It's not like we're big companies with massive kind of budgets for you know team building. So something as simple as the pub, or was it? Um, Elizabeth, who was saying that if they'd had a stressful day or a big day or they'd had, you know, their red tractor inspection or their um, soil associ association inspection, she said she got everybody in and they all just had a takeaway. Well, that mm. is as good team building as yeah. spending a load of money on a weekend away where you have to go doing high ropes. Or something. I mean, I'm sure people we, like we, that, but you know what I mean? We, we try and eat together, all of us, if we can, if we're not all over. The how, how often? four or five times a week right like every day yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. well i just like if people are watching videos i know every morning at like i don't know whenever we finish feeding up it's coffee time and we sit around just it's really makeshift there's just a few chairs and then we just discuss what we're going to do like that day so you know i work with with one dairy business and they they're very social they have a summer barbecue and a winter um you know meal and, and that but some of the others in the in the group, um, they just said that's not for them. You know, they're not social people themselves. So, so what do you do with that? And I think you know, maybe something like have, you know, just having the meal together. Yeah, well, I think back to the WhatsApp thing, the fact that everyone knows what's going on as well. You know, if you just it, it's we didn't really discuss it the last few days, but I've done stuff in the past with AHDB, funnily enough, and it was all about to make people feel more involved. It, say, say if that day you've got a particular task to do it, rather than go around and say, well, you do this, 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 and this, then. So there's like three or four people all doing a bit to make that task happen. You just get everyone around or everyone in the WhatsApp and you say, this is what we need to get done today. And then everyone then go, well, I'll do this and I'll do that. And then they, they all feel a bit more involved as well. It's their idea, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. I, I genuinely think eating together is probably one of the best things or having well, coffee together yeah. i've got it written down here that you have you have brain cells in your stomach well there you go yes yeah. i did say that yeah. you have brain more cells the same as yeah. the cats or more than the cats <laughs> yeah I know that. people feel more connected when they eat together that's what they're saying about covid isn't it and how obviously people's happiness went up because they were eating together so actually that was that's in a family setting but to some extent, people who you work with, in, you know, it's a work family, isn't it? So that does get, and they were talking, obviously, the psychology side of the hormones and things like that. That is socialising without having to, you know, make it a formal networking team building event. The, another question, it's a good one again. Sorry, if they're all, they're all with the mic on. Um, do you think you should mix work with personal relationships with staff? 
Now, I've heard people say in the past, you can't run with the fox and the hounds. And I think that's quite an old way of saying oh, you shouldn't socialize with your staff and just, you know, you're in work. I've heard other people say, I'm not your mate in work and your boss. And I think that's quite old school. Mm. Now, and, and if you start to treat staff like that, you're like, I'll just go work somewhere else. Mm. The, the, was it uh, Danny Sodergren that we're talking about? So 93% of Gen Z is unhappy in their work and, you know, don't feel they belong. And, you know, so with an attitude like that, we're definitely got not going to listen. Yeah, there, there, was, there was a figure somewhere, wasn't there, about yeah, like how, how... In COVID, how many people wanted to quit the job? Yeah. And it was 96% of people. It was crazy high. Obviously, <laughs> no farmers in that at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> being a farmer through COVID was a very cushy number. Like, God's heaven, really. I know, and people are like, it oh, did like, it affect you? No. We had to continue as Everything now. was still, and we had to stay. Exactly. exactly. Actually, and then... Um, Right. Matt Phelan from the Happiness Index, the, the guy from the Happiness Index, which were really interesting, I thought, you know, about ha happier employees, happier people in the business leads to, to more profitable. And there's actually now a hedge fund that will only, so they, they've got a way of scoring it, and they'll only invest in companies that are, are happy. You know, so all these employees are happy because they outperform everybody else. Well, I've got it written down here, 38% of farmers are depressed. And I think I would say that's higher. Thirty-eight percent of farmers admit to being depressed. I was going to say who actually mm. say they are. Yeah. Or, no, or no one understands. Well, when when it was all the Brexit stuff going on about well, it was four or five, ten years ago. How long did the debate Brexit for? Um, NFU did some work looking at different farming subsidies in different countries and how they all worked and what the rates of pay were and this, this that, and the other. And I and they've travelled the world and they got all research and I was like, did anyone just go to the country, the country with the the happiest farmers and say we want their system mm. because that is more productive. Yeah, and that, that's what they should have done. They should have gone to the Scandinavian countries where they are the happiest farmers and copied their system. I you reckon the Scandinavian countries. Yeah, Norway. Oh, they're not, they're not oh, far, yeah. I mean, their 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 government makes if you've got cows or livestock two weeks a year, you have to go on a holiday, and they uh -huh. send relief farmers, relief milkers, or relief herdsmen, so that you've got to go on holiday. The law to go on holiday. I think people find it easier to um like disengage from the farm and go and do things as well because I feel like paid for by the state. But like we find it hard to leave. Like I know coming here, like this is the only place I go I to get the violin out. Like, mm -hmm. but it is it, it makes it quite hard to leave the farm. It's such a responsibility that not many people can relate to, you know, the and it is hard to get away. So that would maybe make it more of a, a normal thing to clear off on holiday, which is, sounds amazing. And, and that was, and you know, we've had so many conversations about how do you bring new people into the industry. And we had this conversation on day one about, you know, it, the farmers till, you know, or a certain part of it has got a, a reputation for being grumpy. And, and, you know, it's almost like a badge of honor of being grumpy. And, and that's not you, how you inspire people. That's not how you bring people on board. So we need to work on that. And I would say particularly people from a non-farming background who haven't been brought up with the idea of you work all your hours under the sun or you pretend to everybody you do, even if you don't. We need to give them something that actually makes them want to be involved and commit the time because it is more time, more time consuming than, you know, an everyday probably like office job, for example, although we put in some funny hours with that as well, to be fair. But we need to we need to help people see that you can be happy in farming and you're allowed to enjoy your job. And I don't think we're very good maybe at acknowledging that emotions exist pretty much full stop. But we need to acknowledge that our employees' emotions exist. And it does sound wishy-washy for us to say as farmers where we, we're meant to be hard-nosed, aren't we? And, and, you know, and not acknowledge it. But we're not. We're the, still the science says in doing that actually makes you more profitable. So yeah. even if you're just interested in money, you know, and that and and uh, so that is still I mean, worth. Elizabeth one. Buchanan said in that talk that stand and smell the roses, basically, is what mm. she said. Enjoy the view and don't pretend you don't love it, and laugh at the lambs prancing around because, like, who can deny that that is the best bit of you know farming altogether? Don't disagree with me because it is. Um, but like just enjoying it there's no shame in enjoying what reward, you do it? it's yeah. amazing I mean I quite often stand and look at the view and go good god I'm so lucky I, did, I didn't write the stats down but they were talking about people that, that feel happier at work 
thing. It was to do with rate to pay, like money isn't everything to everyone, and even less so since COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our parents' generation who would have liked maybe been about money, but now it's it's it's, it's, it's changing. Work. It's, it's been happy at work. Do you know what's really good? Everyone's like discussing it in, amongst themselves. <laughs> <and they're laughs> obviously Brilliant, doing great. So there's, there's another one here. Team building it here includes birthday breakfast on the box for every member of staff and at least one works jolly year looking at new kit that they might be getting. <laughs> uh, someone else says, if you don't mix social with your staff, it's like upstairs, downstairs. Yeah, very yeah. much. Um, you can't beat a Friday morning fry up with your team to get issues sorted and they're in an environment. Yeah. I, um, a question here from James Faulkner, and um, we discussed this last night, especially. So a question uh, for Charlotte. You seem very confident in a male-dominated industry. Um, you know, what's your advice to young women leading in agriculture? And I think you know that's that's true for any you know some diversity. And and you know we need to get better at that. And you know as men we need to to be open for that. But in all seriousness, and how do we stop that kind of you know male pale stale dominated? On a very personal level, I have the best person stood behind me. He's often invisible, but always there and going, do you know what? You it, There's no teaching. It, it, you go and you learn. Like, there is no choice at all. So that was the best way that I learned. Like, I've sat, it, it's so pathetic, like, driving on the road for the first time full, with, like, fully loaded with, like, big bales. I cried, sat beside the road and cried. But I did it, and now I do it all the time, which is fine. It's just one of those very steep learning curves that you had to do. But I think as far as the broader... Um, question just being present and um, not so much an inspiration but just being here and putting yourself forward and not apologizing like I'm doing a daily a daily blog like blog or whatever it is on YouTube and not pretending that you know things like I'm not going into it telling you the horsepower of a uh, John Deere 726754 or whatever they are one, that's why <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing of being authentic though isn't it I, I don't know that and I'm not going to pretend I do so I don't think I can I can feel you know any doubt about it because I'm not pretending that I know it is it is the authentic thing just being authentic you can't really go wrong mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest like never I've always been the type of person personally anyway I will never talk about something confidently that I'm not 100% on. If I know my facts, I know my facts are 100%. I can back them up. I will debate it to the yeah, end. I will. I'm the very like stubborn type. But if I don't know, I'll hands up and be like, I don't know. Enlighten me. What do I not know? Teach me. If you want to learn, you learn. Yeah. And I think you get go. more respect from that. And actually, 100%. it's been able to go out. And sometimes, yeah, you do have to prove yourself. Always. You do have to Always. show that you are capable of doing that job. But it's also about asking for help, as you say, um, when you need it. But I think on that on that wider thing of, of kind of diversity, it was actually scientific proven research yeah. that a diverse business workforce, et cetera, is more profitable. I think it was about 30%. It was, was yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and so, so like people sometimes think it's like a bit wishy-washy, like da -da -da, it's yeah. diversity, but like that guy was literally like, Look, these are the figures. Like, yeah. gonna make it's not. It's not about you know just being PC or whatever. It's, and it is genuinely better for for the business, and and you know that includes diverse thinking. You know, we all think alike, and so we can't. You can't connect with your customers and and the rest. There was a lady on my table. They employ about sixteen staff. It was quite a big dairy farm, and she says I only employ staff that are better at jobs than me. And quite openly, this 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 uh, staff that's a lot of the things on their farm. The staff can do better than she can, and that's why she picks them. And yeah. they know that, and they're appreciated for it. And, I have a nice so. comment here um, from a man called Ian. It's quite often on YouTube, hi, Ian. Um, he says, we used to be taken to agricultural fairs, HDB monthly workshops and training sessions, and every six months, each of us got half a pick for the freezer and a Christmas turkey. Mm -hmm. That's just, mm. it's just appreciation, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah. Mm. Big I've, um, I've had a question on my TikTok. Um, it was, someone has asked, um, would you say an apprenticeship is the best option for agriculture or a full-time college course? What well, you if you're in Cumbria, there's not no college courses anywhere near unless you want to travel to Preston. Yeah, so an apprenticeship would 100% be... Uh, I think it depends on the person, yeah. doesn't it, really? Well, yeah, you're so, right. So, like, um, Emma worked for us. She was originally doing a college course of one day a week, and then she was like, I don't like the college side, but I like the one day a week that I'm doing. So then she went on to being... An apprenticeship, so she was in work all week, basically. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, I think you're dead right. It, it depends on the course. It depends on what's available. So, um, but I think, you know, so it is just getting involved and get stuck in and, and do things. Yeah. I think social media helps that as well because you're showing, you know, I we often get a bit of stick for messing around on TikTok mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's for the kids. So we're reaching kids that no one else can. Mm -hmm. And we're literally putting farming on the screen in front of the face. And, you know, and if two or three kids get inspired by Gina on the huge tractor, bossing, driving, which I couldn't do, <laughs> um, I, that's the best way, I think, to go about it. I it's definitely so, it's so valuable, isn't it? But follow your dreams. If you if you have such a strong, like, love and passion for and I firmly believe if you don't have that strong, firm passion for farming, you're not in the right job. Mm -hmm. You've Good got thing. to love what you do to be able to put in those hours. And mm -hmm. like I say, I was on minimum wage for nine, three, four, five years before I started progressing up to a, a bit better. And it's like, yes, you're not going to be like, yeah, I'm rolling in it. You can do as many hours as you like. That's not going to mm. bring it all in. But if you love your job, money isn't as such a massive object. Yeah, that's a, that was a big theme. Yeah, so yeah. it's yeah. yeah. a hot topic last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think when they were mentioning talking, you said, if you're not passionate about it, you're in the wrong, yeah. um, in the wrong job. They they've been talking. The the speakers have been talking about the fact that if you, it, it's almost not you leaving a job or getting sacked from a job. You're going to find enjoyment in a job elsewhere, which I thought was actually quite a good way of putting it. In that you could come across as actually an unreliable employee, an unproductive employee in the wrong job, but it's because you don't enjoy it. It's your environment as well, isn't yeah. it? You said about nurturing people's environments and not just saying you're doing something wrong it's more looking at the environment first and checking that that's not the thing that's making them negative of course quite quite a lot on here again someone saying uh farming is a lifestyle not a job so mm -hmm. we that. the other thing a lot of farmers and lone workers and um, the only time that we socialize is in the livestock markets that's the point we're talking about leadership <clears throat> and leading people managing staff but there is a lot of farmers that are just one-man bands um, mm -hmm. you know if the livestock markets aren't there anymore, where are they going to meet and how are they going to mix? I mean, this is nice because people are all chatting amongst themselves and they're all watching because they've got a similar interest in it. So that, so I suppose stuff like this can help. Guy from Denmark says, uh, do you guys have the same problem with getting qualified staff onto the farms because of the amount of manual labour? And what do you do to make the workspace more attractive? Now, I we had a similar one from Callum Barber here. And so how do you keep staff motivated when struggling to upgrade equipment? So yeah, a couple of those. Let's let's chat about that. I mean, are there that many jobs on farms that are manual though? Not really. No. The no. veg sector yeah. maybe. Or but... dairy. There's a lot. Oh, of yeah, yeah. It's like it's stuff, yeah. It's hundred percent. But I've noticed since going into more. Oh, I've got. I'm not doing any livestock anymore. Yeah. It's like, it's like the, the guys are saying, and like technological <laughs> revolution is like hitting off. Was it the fourth? Is it like the fourth revo fourth technological yeah. revolution revolutions like happening now with um, artificial intelligence? Basically, like you can type into a computer, um, draw me a picture of whatever you want, and it, an you know, astronaut on a horse. Yeah, astronaut. On a horse. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a horse. There for you. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how drawing the picture helps farming, but like basically what he's saying is that AI is coming in. Yeah, and it, 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 that, that was quite amazing. It's not find a picture that were previously created of an astronaut on a horse. The computer did that. The AI did that. Yeah, yeah. Just back to the one-man bands, markets not being there, whatever. AHDB does, now not an advert, but the monitor farm meetings. There's a guy behind us on a strategic farm. So they do farmer meetings on different farms or different places. And not only is it a social event, but also we'll learn something while you're there and you get value for money back from your levy by attending them. If you don't turn up, if you don't go to the buffet, you don't eat. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing as well, we talked quite a bit about mentors. If you're mm -hmm. a one man or a one woman band, um, you could still get a mentor, that person who you look to for advice. And it's a bit more formal than calling up your friends. Just ring but... Austin. <laughs> 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 Me too. But yeah, a, a mentor is potentially something that you could... That, that was quite an important conversation that came up, you know, the difference between a coach, a mentor and a friend. And yes, you know, so they all have a place. But, you know, as, as good chewing the fat, you know, in the pub with your, with your mate... But actually, sometimes you need a bit of that structure. So, you know, identify somebody 
you know, connect with them. We've actually got some resource on our agri-leader labor life cycle on how to be a mentor and how, you know, just a bit of structure to that relationship, but find somebody that's been there, done that. Okay. And they'll and they love it because you know, so they can share that information. We've had a couple of guys um, here that were, you know, it's an older, and they, they were saying, you know, they, they would, wouldn't, they would love to be a mentor because, you know, they want to share that. M mentor sounds such like a, like a quite an important name for someone. But realistically, if you actually think about it, we've probably all got them in our lives. Someone, mm -hmm. someone that will ring and well, I was just going to say, like people like me and Charlotte have got you as a mentor. I was going to say, yeah. Like, I think... when I first started, like, yeah. YouTube and stuff, they're like, mm -hmm. How do I do this? Oh, me, I'll ring all Well, it's the same with me and Tom. I, I hadn't have a clue what I was doing. And I messaged Tom and he was like, I'll ring me. And, I, and Tom's explained to me how YouTube works. And then Tom rings me up. And because I'm 10 years older than him, the stuff that I'm doing in the business, that he's doing in the business now and invested and pushing on, that I've already done. So like, I like mentor him on other stuff. And it, you wouldn't call it mentoring, but in no. reality, yeah. that's yeah, just that's just that. that's kind Yeah, I must admit, if I, like, I could ring Emma, who's obviously not here today, in Butte and say, I have had an absolutely hellish day. This has happened, this has died, this is it. And she'll go, oh my God, I know exactly how you feel. It just that having that relationship with someone that you can compare sad notes is quite nice. You're not quite as alone because it can be quite a lonely thing mm -hmm. when everything's going wrong. Brilliant comment here on, on Rebecca's YouTube saying, why would I want to get into farming when in a few years I will be replaced by modern machinery? All farming videos are uh, watched around, full of modern technology, replacing manual labor. Do the group agree or disagree? Do you remember that uh, picture of the bust? Uh, well, what I was going to say is the exact comment rounding up the kind of the couple of days was there is always going to be a place for humans, basically because we have emotions and we have that empathy and, and those you know feelings. We're always going to need humans. So yes, labor requirements may be reduced but you're still going to need us and also you still need humans to some extent to interpret some of the data yes it might all be gathered by technology but there's still sometimes a human eye that's needed on the data it can't all be computer driven um so i would like to say that i would have more optimism than that i think the quote was be human-led technologically enabled and there was a great picture of um, this bus were going around so, uh, like a cliff, and one side was the the cliff, uh, the, the you know, some cutting, and the other side was the view across the the valley. And so one one person was sitting looking at the rock face, and the other person was looking out of the valley. And, and the guy sitting at the rock was AI is going to replace my my job, and the other guy's AI was going to replace my job. You know, so it's, it's, it's how you see that. So there's always going to be a place, but it's how your mindset. Is and, and there was a big conversation around growth mindset and how we see things. I think as a livestock like farmer every, as well, like yeah, it's hitting every industry as well, isn't it? It's not like you know we're just having a technological revolution in agriculture. It's happening in like construction. It's 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 happening in every other industry. So it's if you're not on board with it, then you'll get. I think I think one of the things was like, was it be brave or be dead? Be dead. Yeah. yeah. He did say as well, today is the slowest that it will be changing. The world will be changing the slowest today. Yeah, it'll be slow. Ever, ever. ever, and it, it's only going to speed up, and it's never going to be changing as slow as it is today, so just get on board with it. 90% of the world's data is only two years old. I couldn't believe yeah, how that. Is that. But that it's, it's kind of like we've got to produce more food in the next 30 years of agriculture, or 40 years of agriculture, as we have in the last 10,000. Like, that's just incredible. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? But, but, I... but you know, that as an opportunity for the industry you're in, you know, that fact. Of, oh, yeah. So it's, it's been wow. Ten, been 10 years, like. <laughs> yeah, we, need, still we need the technology then. If, if we put you know, figures you can't like do that, that which yeah. are mind-blowing, we're not going to do it by plowing fields with horses and scattering some seeds, are we? Yeah. You know, we've got to keep... Progressing, and I guess people who would have found with horses just, would just, never have seen. Sorry, just dead quicker, people. The camera's broken, but the audio's still working. So if anyone, we are fixing it at the moment. So if anyone's thinking why, I, what's going on? I, I don't know. Sending a message saying they got the audio, the camera's off, or the audio is working. Well, we'll do that. So just to remind everybody, we talk about, and you don't need a title to be lead, uh, to be a leader, and and how we, you know, can change things and how we see things and. You, you know how we lead ourselves 
how we lead the people in our businesses and how we lead our you know lead the businesses. Um, and so, so you know, let's talk a bit about some of that leading self piece. You know, so how do you look after yourself? You know, because actually, so you know, not looking after yourself is very very selfish. Because if you're not in the best possible physical and mental shape. You're selfish because you're letting the people around you down. So working yourself to the ground is actually very selfish. It's, it's not a, you know, it's not good. That's why I came to this event this year and last year because I came away by feeling inspired, driven, and in a better frame of mind to go back to the farm and to take everyone else along and push on. This year I've not been felt because I'm not that well. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of yeah. Joe, as your first uh, conference, you know, what's your thoughts on that leading cell? What What are you going to change? What are you going to do differently? Um, I think like it's just the growth mindset. I think we're going to try and change like the positive, just thinking positively about everything, and then I think good things will follow from that. Mm -hmm. Gina, what are you going to do differently? What are you going to oh. change? I wrote it down and I've got my mind blank. Everything will come back to you. You're not going to get off, we'll come back to you. Um, I would say we're all probably quite lucky in that we're able to justify the time coming to things like this because we've got people who are helping us out at home. But I would say it is, and I'm all over the place and leave a lot to my parents at home. But I would say taking the time to choose the right events and things like this to come to. You, you don't have to go to everything, but it's taking the time to look outside of the farm, I think. Um, and yeah, you don't have to go to every event, but looking outside the farm might be as simple as going to your local ag show and mm -hmm. chatting with a different tractor dealer to who you usually deal with. It doesn't have to be coming to a conference if a conference or a forum isn't your thing. Charlie. I think I'll... Take away, it was more something that happened afterwards. Me and Gina were talking to a lovely man, weren't we? And oh, he was divine. He was, um, he was on the other side of uh, another gentleman who was sat next to us, and he, we were talking about um, social media in general. And we were a bit like, oh god, it's so embarrassing, you know. Um, and he didn't. He he said, no, that's amazing. Like that's really amazing. You're inspiring people. You're doing this. You do. And he really gave you a good pep talk. Yeah. The man in between us, he was maybe slightly older didn't get it he mm. couldn't stop laughing that we earned any money off social media for one yeah, and he just didn't that. understand and I thought I took away that not everyone understands it but don't let that affect you in any way and don't mm -hmm. let it lessen your message or make you feel any less just because certain people don't get you know, the value of you back on the leading self you know, don't let those things affect you I've got someone asking here how you start a YouTube channel <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did it by accident and if you want to start a YouTube channel to make money, it will fail. If you want to start a YouTube channel because you enjoy doing videos, you've got a chance of it going. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. I, I was talking to someone last night who didn't understand it all, and I was showing them the statistics behind the watches, and only 1.7% of the people that watch my YouTube channel are under 17. The yeah, rest mine are all over 17. This, yeah. And there's 8.6% are over 85 which is just staggering, really. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit like a guy with his iPad and his son put Twitter on it and put the right people to follow. He obviously can turn it on and he can watch stuff, but he doesn't know how he's got there. <laughs> but for watching. It's not for kids, social media. Well, no one turns the telly on anymore, does he? So, no, yeah. no, exactly. You think about it in the evening, not many people sit and watch TV, they sit, they sit scrolling. They sit mm -hmm. scrolling through their phone, whether it be Facebook, whether it be youtube but it'd be instagram it'd be tiktok like it doesn't matter what age you are people don't have it you'd be shocked to some of the people you go i would not expect you to have social media and they go i've got it all they're private but they've got it all yeah exactly <laughs> they haven't got to show anything but they see it all yeah and they're learning so. and you can just like tap into the bits that you're interested in exactly. like if you've got an interest in farming you can just watch right. farming things i'm going to drag it back to that you know leading self looking after yourself i don't think we've we've explored that Quite yet. So you know, so what what do you do to make sure you know? So yes, come to things like this. But what what other things do you do to to make sure you look after yourself? You you're in the right state of mind or the you know, right physical health. If I'm having a bad day, I tell people. So yeah. when someone says, "How are you?" I don't say, "I'm fine." Yeah. Say, how are you? I'll say, actually, I've even done it tonight. I'm like, oh, 
so proud. You know, I'll say no, actually, this is you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent say, you know, someone said, Why? So I'll tell them. Then you generally find that they'll say, Oh, yeah, you know, I've had this happen to me today. And, you know, and for five minutes, you both have a moan and you both feel better and you carry on your day. And, and that's the thing I learned. After losing my friend with depression, is, is understanding that if you're not having a good day, just tell people. We are having that conversation last night um, around, you know, if you don't say it or, or, and, and then you kind of try to carry on and then you snap at somebody, that's mm. actually really unfair on, on both parties, isn't it? I think it's really hard, though, to specifically think what I would do to look after myself. Like, I don't, I don't know what that is. I mean, I had a nap today. That's about, <laughs> like, but maybe that we is went to the, the gym. gym. Yeah, yeah, but you, I think you're allowed to do well, to look after. It's resilience, <laughs> isn't it? And you, you were moaning today to us about something, and that made you feel better. You're, you're naturally already good at doing it, but there's a lot of people that are just... Mm -hmm. you know, that up. Yeah. I mm -hmm. I'm an artist. Maybe I that's why that's, I have an outlet. End up being okay on social media because we don't mind offloading stuff. Mm, yeah, know. you're right. You're Maybe. so right. So let's let's go. Yeah, yeah. Charlotte and you're it's an artist. outlet, isn't it? It's some something to to release. You know, when you're stressed, I know it's not farming. It's completely different. It's nothing like it. But that's what I do, I, and I don't do it as often as I should, right. or as often as I'd like. So. <laughs> but you do you do you just you find something you enjoy to i used to go running i don't anymore i can't be bothered but i, I did used to go running and that used to be a release yeah. and, even, and even if you're having a bad day on social media like you say if you try if you try and put a front on people know yeah that they know the true you the real you and that the sarcastic outgoing loud irritating myself um they'll know if you're having an off day and things they won't judge you for it nowadays people it's such it's an a broad, exactly, yeah there's such a it's such a broadly spoken about topic now that no one is actually going to judge you if you're having a bad day yeah that's normal everyone has bad days and has good days but you've got to take each day as it comes think try and think of the positives talk about it if you are feeling really down and in the dumps mm -hmm. and then you're going to progress from there this is a um a good point anything as simple as walking the dog away from the farm yeah that mm. seems tiny doesn't it but the impact that that can have mm. is absolutely massive so i think yeah and, and find what works for you and it doesn't it's like it's like when we talk about team building it doesn't have to be some absolutely massive groundbreaking thing it's just something simple Spaghetti, that works for you string, self <laughs> <laughs> you really I enjoyed that a how to video <laughs> or the rock paper scissor one that was good fun that was very good that fun. was really good fun, good fun. um yeah, it's quite amazing the the how far people are willing to go to try and win a, mm. a spaghetti marshmallow challenge. So we definitely won, and we didn't get <laughs> any. <laughs> we but, but it, was, it, it, was, it wasn't about the spaghetti towers, and they clearly said it's about connecting with people, it's about getting to know people. It and, it and, and you all got <laughs> we still stood up an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> because also, you know, when you had to write down, it was something about your personality traits, or whatever, at one point, and one of mine was competitive. I mean, yeah. obviously, I feel like most of us probably would have had competitive somewhere in there. Mine was That's exactly challenge. what Gina just said, loud, annoying, and hyperactive, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so back to the, dragging in the back of it, how do we get the whole idea of leadership and, and management here? Because some people feel it's a bit, it's for you know, people over there. It's not, it's not for me. How do we get it a bit more normalised? How do we, you know, get people engaged with it? I think that's interesting because actually, like one of you was saying before, I can't remember who it was, unless you've been in the position of the employee, you wouldn't understand what it's like. So the people who are the employees will often make the best managers because they can relate to mm -hmm. the people that are working yeah. underneath them. And I don't mean that in a, a derogatory way. I'm just mean, you know, mm -hmm. they can understand. I worked in an industry before coming to farming after, after I've been to you with, and all they did was promote people from within. So, like, you started at the bottom, and if you wanted to get to the top, you had to do every single job to get up there. Right. Um, um, which I think we do as, like, on family farms, you do that, don't you? Because, like, you, you start, like, doing, I don't know, washing the lorry out or something like that, and then that, you work your way up. That's a good thing, but it could also be a bad thing because they're not bringing any new ideas into the business, are they? 
Yes, well, so I guess it's the best he's bring external consultants in to coach him and mentor him and whatever. Mm. But but if if the managers at the top all they've ever done is hire out cars, is that what you when you're enterprise? yeah, we're enterprise, yeah, yeah, it could be it could make it stale as well. Like someone coming in from the side with fresh ideas from a different industry could do it better. I mean, you know, that's what the airlines did, wasn't it? Start Ross from EasyJet coming and turning airlines on the head. Mm-hmm. Like, why, why does the price go up? Why does the price get cheaper near the time it should go the other way? And then suddenly the airlines are on the head, aren't they? I think it, it varies depending, you know, on, on the situation. But if if you're in a company and they're always bringing people at the top, that's really demotivating, you know, in that you haven't got that progression. So I guess it works both ways. How how else do we make it all, you know, more normal? How do we get more people involved and actually spending time on it? Because that's, you know, it's, it is actually such a crucial part. But to get people into the industry, you mean? No, no, into in, involved, you know, people in the industry, how do we get them more involved with leadership and, and management and, you know, spending time on it? You know, they've a lot of people, they'll, they'll go, you know, to a monitor farm or, you know, something technical, but so this whole idea. I, I think it's just people knowing that the things are happening. That, that's the thing. There's, there's so much good resource that's, I want to say free, but really it's been paid for already out there and it, people just need to realize it's there the, the, the sad thing is is that there's, there's people that have got so much help but they've not helped themselves by even looking to see if it's there like the room of people yesterday they'd all thought right i, I want to push on i want to improve myself i'm going to go and then they've got something out of it but there's people out there thinking, what's the point what's the point and if you've not gone you wouldn't know the first one i went to was only because i knew amy Mm-hmm. He used to he used to work here. She's like, oh, you should come and stay. You'll really enjoy it. And she was right. And I've said to people, come along, and it's really good. But it's getting people to realise that it's there. Mm-hmm. It's useful and to make that first step. And, and I think I people think... need to know that, like, if you are invested in this sort of thing, it's going to pay dividends for your business, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. money wise. It's not like a wishy washy thing. It's going to. Well, it's money. just the fact that you might be able to retain staff better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Rebecca, that makes it easy. I was going to say exactly what Joe said in that we have to help people learn that making these decisions, implementing leadership, improvement, whatever, is going to be profitable for your business. It's going to be more accurate. Your employees will be more productive. And I think, unfortunately, you know, I've said it today, oh, you know, we need to think about emotions and feelings and whatever. Unfortunately, farms are going to usually have to be driven by is that going to return profit profit mm-hmm. for me you know that's although be it we don't always see ourselves as businesses enough people really need to have that buy-in that there will be an investment uh, there will be a return i think it's it. like difficult with farms because it's like a farmer will go and buy this new track this new fancy tractor this is going to save him like two percent on his fuel or something like that whereas like if that money had been invested maybe in some leadership Training or something along those lines. Keeping staff longer. You you can be a leader of yourself. I was going to say, you've got got to have the confidence. And and like the the doctor guy that that caught with some new thing on heart surgery, he he wanted to take other people with him. They didn't want to go, but he led himself. He he had the motivation to do it himself. And that's the thing because someone's put here, you know, what, uh, there's only me and my dad on the farm, you know, what about team of this, this, that, and the other. But you can, by coming here and coming up with new ideas, fresh thinking, and, and a positive mindset, you can just push yourself forward more. You don't have to lead 10 people at work yet. You can just lead yourself in a, in a, in a, in a better way. I think, right, do you know what? I'm going to do this because it's a good idea and I think it'll work and I believe in it and let's go and, and, and drive your business forward. Then it might only be you. You might only be the only employee. Something really that resonated with me today was um, Jamil said, you know, if you've got two parallel lines, you only got to be one percent. One, you only one degree. degree, and you know, so when the line starts off, that's not going to be a big difference. But in the end, you know, it's going to end up over there. <laughs> and I think it's the same with leadership. You know, it doesn't, you know, appreciate something like this might be something very difficult. But so just do something small. Go online. We've got some resources. Do something small, and you know, it doesn't have to be this grand gesture. Just get involved. Just do something. You know, one degree. So when you remember, try and do something. You know, and 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 so that over time will uh, end up in a great, you know, big result at the end of it. So I think that's that's maybe the first step. Does that Positive make a small mindset. small first step? Yeah. yeah. Right. I think. And so what I'm going to do in a minute is go around each one. and so one take a message. You know, some poor people out there. What's your thoughts? You know, some on on whatever we discussed here. 
Um, so this time I'm going to start with Joe. So your take home message. Right. So my take home message um, was, I think one guy said, be a winner uh, who, who creates other winners. Yes, I like that. And I like that as a quote. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to double check that uh, I was reading that right then, but yeah. Take That's people it. with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tina, your take home message. <laughs> my take home message would be that I've got my blank again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tina, we've, so we've had a we've had a, a comment on your TikTok from oh. Yorkshire Farm Lads. Um, do you know Yorkshire yes, Farm Yes, we Lads? do. Yeah, right. So the employees are most productive when treated as equals to the people in charge. So thought we know their boss, we are workers, and they have a check with they treat people as equal. So uh, I, th I guess it's back to that, you know, the, the, the whole hierarchy things that we talked about earlier. Mm. Yeah, seeing people on a level with you and not seeing yourself as above someone is quite a nice thing on the farm, isn't it? Yeah, so I'd be like, just make sure whatever you do in your work environment, you work as a team and just really push yourself to ask questions and don't be afraid to feel like you are any less than anyone else that's there really if you can you're there for a reason exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. you're they've hired you you haven't just rolled into it you would they would have said yes to you you've done your you've gone to your interview they want you do your best give your best shot be the best version of yourself, of yourself. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. right charlotte Posit take, take positive on. mindset definitely and knowing your value and not questioning it so much I think like yeah. explaining it to people from maybe not so much a farmer um you know like associated things and they you know they really do go oh that's amazing and you go oh, yeah this is actually quite amazing yeah isn't it? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's an we amazing really job to be in we're so lucky um and yeah I, take, I do take that away it is actually quite interesting with the speakers that we we bring to this they you know we always try and bring people from outside of the industry and and people's got such a good will and such a fascination with farming mm. and, and we really don't sell that very well, I think. Yeah, no, we just take it for granted yeah. sometimes, yeah. don't we? Um, just really simple, just back yourself. And that's all about the mindset, it's creating that positivity. And albeit I'm absolutely useless at golf, that envisaging yourself as how you would behave if you were the top five in the world because we can all do that. You don't need to go to a forum or a conference or read some complicated book to envisage yourself as the best version of yourself. If, you can just do that tomorrow. If if you, you know, if you believe you're the person, you know, if you're going to be the best inspirer of that team or you're going to be the motivator on that team, if you are going to be the best person like that, how would you behave? And then actually still already start behaving like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've sort of already said it, but you can. You, leadership isn't just about leading people; it's about leading yourself. And if there's events like this that come up, don't think I don't I haven't got five, ten staff. I don't see the point. You will go and you will improve yourself. And and one of the things I've written here, which was learn to dance on a shifting carpet rather than be tripped over by a rubber being pulled. And and that's like, you know, the. It was at another conference similar. They were talking about running a business and problems. Um, every day there was a problem, a different problem, and another problem, and another problem. And then they got talking to someone else from another business, and they just turned around and went, that's what running a business is. It's just solving problems every day, mm -hmm. and you won't know what they are until they happen. And once you get your head around the fact that it isn't just me that has all these problems, it happens to everyone, then you can start to relax a bit and think, well, that's just life, and you just go on with it. But, but yeah, you, Positive mindset is will make you a good leader, I would say. And then, right. And in a minute, we'll send a reminder everybody of who you are, what your handles are, and all of that. But um, if you're interested in, in the research, it's called Bridging the Gap, um, Agri Bridging the Gap Report, or go and have a look at our labor life cycle resources. You know, there's stuff on there about mentoring and how do you manage people and just take that first little steps and, you know, so go and have a look at that. You know, to become a mentor, ask somebody to become your mentor, or how do you to treat people, manage people better? So, you know, so take that first little step. So that would be my take home and my little plug for us. So, Joe, remind people who who you are. Um, so Joe Seals. Um, what we're saying on on like TikTok and yeah, YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. So find me on there if you want to check me out. 
I'm Georgina Samet. You'll find me on TikTok, Instagram. So if you have any questions, my Instagram DMs are always open and I will have a spot through any appropriate ones in a sense. I'll keep repeating, <laughs> please, because I will not respond to anything not. And I can help I do my best to help you with anything you saw. I'm Charlotte Ashley. I am on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, anything. Um, yeah, likewise, the same as as Gina. Like, yeah, DMs are always open. You do, you forget to say that, but yeah, if anyone ever did need anything, and, and can you just say hi to Zoe Bell from East Anglia? Big fan of yours, and I believe she's watching. Hi to Zoe Bell from East Anglia. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Rebecca Wilson on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, I'm Ollie Harrison or Ollie Blogs or Agri Contract on most of them. I am not going to say my DMs are, are open and it sounds really selfish, but there's a reason because I do get that many messages and sometimes I don't see them for days. And then when I open them, I feel really bad that I'm not replied to someone. And it's been like a, a question or someone's been worried about something and I feel bad that because I've not been able to get to them. So please don't think I have got time to reply to everyone's messages because I'm already having it and I don't want to make a promise to you. And I think you might regret it. I think <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just said that. Yeah, just, just be very careful because you can let people down. That's yeah, really and that's... You have to respect that. So they are in your message request at the end of the day. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say I'm going to sit there all day reading everything, everything, so that everyone's going to say, you haven't got time for that. We've all got jobs yeah. to earn us going with. But if I get a chance, to, especially like... They got a question about something that I, I know I can answer. Oh, yeah. I, I can't have everything. Yeah. I'm not sure. 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 i like Ollie said, some chatting there amongst yourself is, is what this is all about. It's a community. It makes it great. So thank you very much. And um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> what does Jo say? She's waiting. <laughs> and we didn't have a YouTube, Jo. <laughs> <laughs>